Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, a bunch of little pieces of news, some of which actually could be a whole new video, but I'm not into decompression, so we're just going to cram it all into one. Uh, the first is that, yes, if you were a uh, long-awaiting Wonder Girl by Jolie Jones and you were wondering when that series is coming out, The Continuing Adventures of Yara Fleur, it is coming out officially in May. Originally, they had advertised and kind of hyped this as coming out uh, as part of the launch in March, or at least that's what we believed from how it was written. Uh, but it is actually coming out in May. And part of this, um, nobody's saying it, but there, there is a little bit of a sense that they want to make sure Jolly Jones can can get ahead of the schedule. And, and for that, I say, good. That's smart thinking. Please, please do. Um so the, the comic basically promises kind of a, a little bit of an origin of setting up kind of her, her story. Um, it, it, the solicitation reads, raised in the far off land of Boise, Idaho. Boise? Okay. Boise, Idaho. Yara has always felt something missing from her life and she's headed to Brazil to find it. But her arrival will set off a series of events that will change the world of Wonder Woman forever. So, uh, so there you go. There's a little image there of, uh, Julie Jones clearly in the Chicago airport, but, um, we'll see if, if that's where, uh, she actually, you know, they shows from infinite frontier zero. So we'll see, um, we, you know, we'll, we'll see how that all goes. I, I did like the wonder woman series by Julie Jones. So looking forward to seeing, uh, what that has to do, well, you know, where, where that is going, um, in some very early interviews, there's at least some sense that Cassie would be involved here somewhere. Uh, no sign of uh, Donna Troy or any of that. So anyway, that's the news, the official bit on uh, Wonder Girl. It's coming out in May. Also in DC is uh, this announcement that we're going to digital first, but then like they've been doing, it will release in, uh, in shops. Then later is uh, they're going to print some unpublished uh, Suicide Squad, Nightwing, uh, Harley Quinn, Bat Batman kind of stories. And they're calling this the Let Them Live. They're unpublished tales from the DC vault. And they're, they're bringing an ambush bug to kind of frame this because who doesn't love more ambush bug? But they're, uh, they're, this looks a little bit like in the midst of getting, uh, you know, future state all put together. They came across a bunch of other stories that just for whatever one reason or another had not gone out sometimes once upon a time uh, it was a common that the publishers would have some some shelf stories some backup stories that they would use in the event that you know a series got late or if an artist needed it they would call us a fill-in issue and it was I think reasonably smart to have it definitely saved some some comic runs uh, back in the day um, but this one uh, the first issue the suicide squad story is going to be written by Jim Zub. Uh, Trad Moore, Felipe Soberino, Nate Picos are doing the art for it. Um, it's, it's kind of, um, the ambush bug is being, the, the framing sequence is being written by Elliot Kalan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. And it's, it's just kind of meta narrative framing device, uh, you know, Deadpool like. Uh, so we're getting that. We're getting a Nightwing story by, uh, uh Colin Kelly. We're getting a uh, Batman tale from Scott Brian Wilson. So anyway, this is going to continue as long as there are inventory comics to publish. And the anticipation is this is going to go uh, digital first and then uh, show up at some point, uh, printed maybe a couple copies. I don't know. We don't know. In terms of when this is coming, uh, we also don't know that either. Uh, soon is, is what uh, we've heard. No, I take it back. What do I what do I know? It's already out. Uh, Let them live. Number one came out yesterday. This is the awesome marketing. We're having to talk about it in. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, DC. Um, anyway, it's already out, and apparently it's going to be going every two weeks starting now. So uh, so there you go. Way to way to go, DC. You're you're awesome. Um, switching gears a little bit to Marvel. Uh, Fantastic Four is getting uh, a life story. So there was Spider-Man Life Story by Chip Zdarsky, which was very, very popular. So how do you follow that up? You do Fantastic Four Life Story. Um, and this is written by Mark Russell. Uh, Mark Russell, uh, who I think just recently gave us Imperious Lex. Uh, so this is going to take the Fantastic Four and it's going to age them in real time. Um, and it's going to fall from the 60s and, and take them through the decades. So six issue, limited series, Mark Russell, artist, Sean Izaki, uh, which is going to basically go through the whole series. 
Uh, it looks light. It looks nice enough. Um, one of the things that worked about Spider-Man Life Story, I think, was the art kind of fit what they were doing and changed. Um, it doesn't look, it looks a little bit too sparkly here. The little shots that they've shown of the 60s look like a, a modern illustrated comic uh, as if it was in the 60s. And, and that that kind of lost, the, you know, the part of the charm of Life Story was how the art and the story kind of blended together. But anyway, uh, this is coming as well. And it looks like this comic is in May that uh, will be part of the solicitations. We'll get to we'll get to see that as well. Um, in terms of, I'm, I'm going to do some spoilery stuff here at the here at the end. Um, we've got an omnibus for Inferno that uh, Marvel is kind of long. I, they they've long promised, and we don't know where this has been. But anyway, um, that is something that is coming as well. Um, there is, uh, as as you may have known, there was a vote for who will be on the next uh, member of the X Men. And this is all leading to a summary-ish event. Nobody's calling it an event. It's just a, a thing. There will be a little a little crossover, kind of like when Xavier got shot uh, early on in the Dawn of X uh, stories. It's the Hellfire Gala. It's uh, I I did the the world of grave disservice in talking about how uh, they could do a dinner party at some point, and the White Queen would host it, and people would show up, and it would be an event around to what's for dinner, and. Uh, I, I sure enough, we're getting Hellfire Gala. Um, and this is going to be a little mutant party where they're going to unveil who the new members are of the X-Men now that voting has ended. And uh, what you are what what is new is uh, if you are part of Marvel Insider, which is a you know basically a little a little kind of thing that you can do, um, you may, uh, be lucky enough to be drawn into this uh, this this event. So this is a nice little uh, sweepstakes where you 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 the reader could actually be standing around at the Hellfire Gala having wine and dinner with the X Men. So that's uh, now's your chance, true believers. You too can go to dinner with the X Men. So 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 there's that. Um, in the world of, I've told you so, and I don't know why a lot of people disagreed, like aggressively disagreed with me. And I, I have no idea why people, well, it seems obvious to me. Uh, we did get some confirmation, at least with a very painful, uh, page, uh, that America Chavez is getting a, a new origin. She's learned that, uh, her powers, uh, are the, the full origin to her powers are not what she expected it. And she's losing it. It can't be real. And uh, so th this is, I, I, I really, really am going to love uh, Marvel and DC, everybody just getting over, trying to make Twitter conversations inside the comic book as an ad. They suck so much. I, I may, technically, I guess this isn't Twitter. This is just chat messaging, but it's not funny. It's just this stuff. It's, it's like always cringe level of bad. I've never met anybody who's like, I think this is hilarious. Nobody ever. Uh, so anyway, there, you know, in a little ad that shows a conversation between Kate Bishop and America Chavez, there's this indication that they're, they're going to retcon or change, uh, part of her, her life story or history, her power, something is changing, uh, which of course it kind of has to, this was my point before they're, they're going to do a Disney plus show. There is zero, zero chance. They're going to do the Gabby Rivera history of America Chavez in that show. It's just, it, it's not going to happen. In addition to the girl being like way too young an actress to have her tied into all the, that kind of stuff. It's just, it doesn't work. So now as part of America Chavez, number one, back in the USA, a limited series launching in March, uh, they're going to be, they, they certainly, she's younger looking in the comic. They've, they've, they've cleaned that up quite a bit. They've de-aged her and now her powers are also, and her history looks like it's changing as well. So not shocking at all, but definitely some people were argued, arguing with me about that. So not and not a boo-boo. Uh, that's what you're supposed to say when you're a mature person. Um, the, la the two last things, uh, both Thor related. So first, uh, they're revealing that uh, Jarnborn, Thor's axe, uh, was actually owned by the original first Valkyrie. Um, as all part of the, your weapons actually belong to someone else that you didn't know of before. And they are super important and awesome and impressive. So, uh, we, we learned that this new Valkyrie who looks like Tessa Thompson, um, is, uh, basically she was the first one, uh, who, who had, uh, Jarnborn before Thor. So not only 
she's the first Valkyrie, but she also had his weapons first too. So that, that's cool. Um, I don't know why they do things like this. Anyway, uh, the last bit of news, uh, again, this is spoiler territory for the Avengers and Thor. So shut off the video now if you haven't seen it, haven't heard it yet. Yes, in uh, the newest issue of the Avengers, they have confirmed it's happened. It's now uh, canon-ish that uh, Thor is the son of the Phoenix, that uh, Odin and BC Phoenix got together back in the day and they had a little Thor baby and that is who his true mom is. So it ripping out kind of the origins that we learned about in, um, well, hell, in War of the Realms, also by Jason Aaron. So th certainly there's some questions here. Where will this all go? We'll find out. But uh, Thor, son of the Phoenix. So there you go. That's all the news that's fit to print, so to speak. Hope you are having a good uh, Comics Wednesday, and thanks for listening.